Hi, I'm Val from Quilty Pleasures, and I have a couple of products here that we talk about all the time, and it has dawned on me that we haven't demonstrated them in a long time. So uh, I wanted to show you the Stripology rulers. We use them all the time. They are such time savers. They give you incredible accuracy. You're going to love them, but I want to give you a little demonstration so that you can see how much uh, they will improve your life. They're designed by Gudrun Erla, who's one of our favorite designers. We make her patterns all the time, and she has written a lot of them with these rulers specifically in mind, or she designed the rulers to work with her patterns. I'm not sure it's a chicken and egg thing, but um, they're brilliant. She's very smart. She's thought of everything and she's had creative grids produce the rulers. So uh, they're known for their accuracy, they're known for their non-slip um, textures on the mat. So all kinds of good things to, to check out on these rulers. This is the extra large size and it's, um, it's kind of a combination of the original Stripology ruler and then the Stripology squared ruler. So I'm going to spend more time showing you what this ruler can do and then we'll go and look at the, the other rulers as well. But it is Creative Grids as we said. This is a, a slotted ruler so every half inch, I don't know if you can see that, it's got a slit in it with a keyhole top and bottom at each one and the uh, numbers are all outside the keyhole so they do not interfere with the uh, when you're trying to to see your fabric and every slit in the ruler has the creative grid non-skid surface to it so it's going to stay put on your fabric it's great um, so the grids are cut every half inch. You're given inch markings in the, the circled numbers. And then for the common cuts, two and a half inches, one and a half inches, which are kind of the common cuts for Gudrun's uh, patterns. For every two and a half inch, she's placed a square. So you don't have to look at the measurements you can just go square 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 or every half inch and a half there's a star so you you just don't have to pay attention you can just cut wherever the star is wherever the square is it's very very simple so I'm going to show you how the ruler works and you'll be really wowed because it is so versatile all right so let's get started I'm going to show you some basic cuts Amy's making a quilt that uses two and a half inch strips very common size of, of strip to, to be cut, so I'll cut them for her out of this uh, fabric from Adorn. It's in Amy's signature pink, so it'll be perfect in her quilt. So what I did, because when um, fabric comes off the bold, often it hasn't been rolled straight or it hasn't been cut straight or any number of things can kind of go wonky. I press out the um, middle seam from the fabric before we use the ruler because we want everything to turn out nice and straight. We don't want our strips to have elbows in them or any bends or weirdness. We want nice straight strips. So to do that, I want to fold my fabric so that it is nice and straight. Now I'm just going to align the selvage edges here. I'm way off. You can see that the fabric is not hanging the way it should. It's got a, a big wavy thing in it. So I'm going to scooch those selvage edges over until it's hanging nice and straight. Just kind of scooch it a bit. And then I'm putting it down on the table. And I can feel here my my uh, fold doesn't have any any wavy bits or any weirdness going on. It's nice and flat. My cut edges aren't lining up properly, but this is what I'm concerned about here. And I'm going to bring this folded edge up and cover up the, the selvage. 
and I'm going to feel again because I don't want any any pleats or folds or anything happening inside. I want it to be nice and smooth. And then I'm going to put that folded edge right on my line. I don't use the lines on my cutting mat for cutting or for measuring, but I do use them for keeping things straight. And then I'm going to check up here. I want these two edges to be perfectly parallel to each other. So if this edge is on a line, this edge should be equidistant from a line. It's not likely it's going to land right on a line, but it will come very close. So I can kind of eyeball that. And if I'm happy with the way that lines up and that lines up, I'm good to go. So, turning my ruler around the right way, that helps. I am going to put the, um, I'll use the white line because I can see it nice and clearly. Your first cut is always done on the zero line and that's to clean up this edge. My edges don't match, right? And actually my one selvage is just to the right of that line. So I know I have to get further right to clean up everything. So I'm going to put this line, this white line, along the bottom fold. I'm over far enough that I'm going to get that selvage. And this white line here, I don't know if you can see it, it's running right along the edge of the top fold, so I'm happy this is perfect. Now, there's a keyhole design in the bottom and the top of the uh, ruler so that you can get your rotary cutter in. You just put your cutter at a bit of an angle to get it started, straighten it up, and there you go. Whoops. And then I've cleaned off that, that end. I'm cutting two and a half inch strips, so I'm going to go to every square. Two and a half, five, seven and a half, ten. Five, seven and a half. The, the seven and a half, I'm in a little groove there. Um, I don't even have to really count my numbers because all I have to do is look at the squares. The weight of the ruler has held my fabric in place uh, and the grippers in each little section is holding the ruler steady against the fabric. So I'm quite confident it's going to be nice and accurate. So this is just garbage. One strip. Okay, so I missed this little tiny bit. My bad. But there are my strips, two and a half inches, and they're perfect. So that's for Amy. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. Okay. The other things that you can do with this ruler If we, I don't know if you can, can see, the white concentric squares, I don't know, is that the term for when the squares are all nested in each other? Or is that just circles? I don't know. No, it makes sense for squares. These are for squaring up blocks. And the blocks in the white squares are half inch increments. So you can do four and a half inch blocks, five and a half, six and a half, all the, the sizes that end in a half. If you're doing even number blocks, four, five, six, seven inches, oh it starts at three, you use the black lines over here in the corner. Okay, so um, these are used for squaring up blocks, and fussy cutting if you're looking for a particular motif that you want to really highlight in your blog. So I have here um, a four patch block that I, or a 
quarter square triangle block that I made and it doesn't it didn't turn out very good because my two sides weren't equal so I want to I want to trim it down and right now it measures one two three four five about six inches let's take it down to five and a half okay so we will use the white the white squares here and to do that you rotate the ruler around there are diagonal lines here there's the center where they cross and I've got my quarter square triangles I just put those lines on my seams and I know I'm I'm square on my block now I have to keep my wits about me I, I lose track of stuff all the time so for me to figure out which size I want to do and make sure I don't get confused I like to use the little um, G ruler stickers that um, Gudrun has designed to use with her rulers and these are little vinyl stickers they come in three colors so you can distinguish between different cuts different different sizes whatever you need to, to do they just peel off I am going to I said it was six inches I want to go to five and a half so um, here's four and a half the next one is five and a half it isn't labeled because it would clutter up the ruler too much but the one after that is six and a half so I'm just taking the one in between I know that that's five and a half and so I'm going to put a sticker there and I'll put one at the other side too just to make sure I don't mess up because I've been known to sometimes often Never. Alrighty, so here's my four and whoops, my five and a half inch square here. I've marked my two slots where I'm going to cut, and now I'm just going to go cut, cut, and then this is garbage. Rotate my block again line up my X's on the seam line and this time because I've already cut these two sides the five and a half inch line is going to lie right on the edge like that and again cut and cut and my imperfect block is now perfect. The other cool thing about the ruler, which I should mention, um, in a block like this I've, I've got a bit of a lump in the middle and when you put the ruler on that lump, if you're using a regular ruler that's inflexible, sometimes if the lump is big enough your ruler kind of rocks and it's hard to get a nice square cut. With this the um, the slots in the ruler let it kind of conform to the irregularity there in the middle, but your edges are still perfect. So it doesn't affect the cut at all and you don't have to worry about keeping that ruler from rocking. So uh, that's just an extra bonus that comes with the design. Um, one of the other things that this ruler is good for, it has uh, diagonal lines on it, angled lines, one at 45 degrees, this one, and one at 60 degrees, this one, useful for doing triangles, diamonds, all those kinds of cuts. So I'll just show you quickly how to do easy diamonds. So I have a two and a half inch strip here and I'm going to put my 60 degree line along the bottom of that strip. Isn't that your 45? It is. I'm going to do that with my 60 degree Thank you, Amy. And I'm going to start with my zero, clearing the salvage. So I'm going to do that. This was two and a half inches. I want two and a half inch diamonds, so I'm just going to cut, cut, go all the way up. There are my diamonds. 
If you were doing this with a regular ruler, it would take forever. And I know that because I've done it, but this just makes really quick work of um, funny shapes like that. You can also use it for half hexagons, um, 60 degree triangles. That's just by cutting these guys in half. And I'm going to tell you right now, um, I am not the person to demonstrate all of these things the best, but Gudrun is. She designed this and her videos are amazing. So on our, um, where is it, Amy? On the, the description of our video. On the, oh, but where, what? <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a link in the description of this video. Oh, okay. There'll be a it's description. Also, it's on our Facebook page okay. or our, on our, in, our uh, YouTube, page. YouTube page. So if you go to our <laughs> website and you look for this video or you're watching it now, right? If you're like, <laughs> anyway, if you go to the description of this video on our website, there will be a link to Gudrun's video, which is much better and way more professional than this one is. There was one other thing I wanted to show you. Oh yeah. So a lot of people, I showed you two and a half inch strips. A lot of people do two and a quarter inch strips for binding or whatever, or some patterns will say, cut your strips at two and a half, two and three quarters, even three and three eighths or three and seven eighths, weird stuff like that. You can do that as well. So for the quarters, um, got a piece of fabric here. This one's really wonky, so I'm just gonna do my fold fold thing. There, good. Okay, so I can't use my half inches where they are because it won't give me a quarter inch measurement. It's gonna give me full inches and half inches. So I need to, to just make a slight modification. It's still really super easy. And what you do, get myself lined up here, get my, my I'm gonna use that line get my first cut ready. Oh, I'm nice and square, that's excellent. You take the width of the strip you want to cut, in this case it's two and a quarter inches, and double it, four and a half. So you're going to clean up your first edge by cutting along the zero, and then I'm gonna to go to the four and a half and cut, and then on the side of the ruler here, get rid of this, there are dotted lines a quarter inch away from the zero line, half inch away from the zero line, three quarter inches away from the zero line. And I'm just gonna scoot this over so that the quarter is on the edge. I'm still straight. And now I'm going to cut on the two inch line because that would give me two and a quarter. And if that's too complicated, there you are, two and a quarter inch strips. If that's too complicated, there is a chart that Gudrun has um, put on her website nice big numbers so tells you where for the different sizes of strips that end in quarters where your first cut is going to be your second all along the, the length of the ruler which is 20 inches long so it's pretty good and then when you move it over to the quarter inch line where your second cut will be to give you the correct measurements for your um, for your strips. So she's taken care of all that. These are on her website. You can print them out. But they are also in the instructions that come with your ruler. So, look at There's just tons of instructions. You've got lots of support from Creative Grid. There's your chart right there. But it's tiny, so it's much easier to read it when you um, print it off of Goodrin's good insight. Um, but this tells you how to how to do everything. They have videos as well. Creative Grid does. Probably they just send you to a good one. But um, yeah, so it's fantastic. Now, sometimes 
I mean, this is kind of big, right? It is, the whole thing is 22 inches by, I don't know, 15. And it, it wobbles. So you do want to be careful when you're, when you're moving it around. You want to hold it by the edges or by these edges. Don't try and hold it, you know, in the middle because these things can break. They're fairly fragile. Um, and it does have a hangy hole. Where is it? Here it is. So you can hang it on the wall and keep it safe when it's not in use. But, um, so just be careful transporting it. But because it's so big, oops, the Stripology squared ruler is a nice alternative. Um, it's not quite as, as long, so you can only do up to 12 and a half inches in your cuts rather than 20. But it's got the same, um, the same markings on it. You can use it to square up the even side sized blocks with the black lines or with the red, the, the half inch blocks. It's got the quarter inch on the side. It's got um, almost everything that this one has. It, this one doesn't have the 60, this one doesn't have the 60 degree lines that the extra large one has. So it's not quite as, as versatile, but it's very handy for taking to classes or to the cottage or your RV or to a retreat, something like that. It's a little bit um, easier to manage. And then another one that I use a whole lot that I, I really like is the mini Stripology ruler, um, which is great for charm packs if you're, if you're working with smaller cuts, smaller pieces that you're going to, to then further pre-cut. Same features as the other ones, only it's just smaller. And it does have if you flip it around, it labels the quarter inch marks at the bottom, so it's um, a little bit more intuitive when you're when you're cutting those quarter inch um, markings. And it's got the eighth inch as well. <clears throat> I'm gonna die. <laughs> so the, again, on Gudrun's um, website, there is a chart for where you make your first cut, where you make your second cut. If you want to do eighth inch or you know, some patterns uh, will say, you know, kind of a three and seven eighths inch square. Well, that's awful. But when you've got um, this ruler, it's much, much simpler. And if you're doing the Moda, my favorite color is Moda, sew along with us, there are some instances where they do call for those kinds of squares. So this is really helpful. Another thing I want to show very quickly is how to use your ruler to fussy cut. Sometimes we want to put a certain motif um, in the middle of a block or we want to highlight an embroidery and you want to center it. It's hard to, to center things like that, but these rulers make it really easy. And all three sizes do the same thing. So just for practice today, I'm going to pretend that I'm making an eye spy quilt and I want to put a dinosaur riding in a convertible. Okay, so I've got my um, my little dinosaur here, and I'm just going to use a friction pen and put a dot kind of where I think the middle is. I'm just eyeballing it. You can be more precise and use your ruler to measure, but I'll show you how to do that. So there's my dot. I want to make a four inch square. That's the the black lines here. So I've put my ruler marks here so that I know where to cut. And if you can look, there's a diagonal line here and a white one here. And where the white line and the black line cross, that's my center point. And I'm going to put that on my dot that I drew. Okay. Now, if I want to double check this, or if I wanted to use the lines on my ruler to, uh, to do my initial centering, if I, you, there's a slit there, it's one inch to the edge, kind of from the bumper. This one's over a little bit, and uh, so I could kind of scoot it over a bit if you want to be really particular about it, so that's fine. So now I'm going to cut, but I'm going to scoot this up just a bit because I want that keyhole to 
so there I'm straightening that. Here's my line here. I'm doing this upside down, folks, so if I were doing it normally, I would have the ruler the other way. So now I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to center it, but now I've cut two edges, so I have those lines to line up against. And my, here's my center, where's my dot? There it is. So I had moved it, so it's gonna be roughly there. And again, I cut here, and I cut here, and there's my four inch block with my dinosaur in the center of it. Yeah. And with the extra large ruler, you can do much larger blocks, obviously, and with the, um, with the uh, regular stripology squared, you can also do up to 12 inches. So um, you, you've got a lot of scope. And there are ways of doing even bigger blocks, and Gudrun shows you in her videos how to, how to handle oversized blocks. So um, do take a look at her videos, but these rulers are gonna be your best friends. You're gonna use them all the time. And when you think of how much time you spend cutting and how important it is to be accurate, it's so worth it. It just makes everything so much easier and saves you time so that you can get to the fun part, making your quilt. All right, thanks very much.